So here, when we go to uh, uh, verse 14, it says, his head and his hair were white like white wool. Amen. So uh, here, uh, his head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, as white as snow. Okay, so that is the speciality of the of the head and hair when uh, Apostle John was, I mean, seeing the vision about Jesus Christ. So, which means, or that indicates many things. Okay, when we say that his head and his hair is white like a wool and white as snow, that indicates many things. Number one, it indicates the pre-existence and the eternal existence of Jesus Christ. Pre-existence and eternal existence of Jesus Christ. And also, it says about the divine purity and holiness of Jesus. The divine purity and holiness of Jesus. You know, everything is not there, so you have to write it down. Okay, when I'm when I'm giving the only the points I'm giving, and the rest of the things you have to write it down. Okay, so what what do you mean by I mean uh, when it is said that I mean the the head and hair of Jesus was white like wool, as white as snow. That means the pre-existence and the eternal existence of Jesus Christ, and also the divine purity and holiness of Jesus Christ. The the divine purity and holiness of Jesus Christ, and also the ancience of Jesus, the ancience of Jesus. Amen. So for that, we will be reading uh, from uh, Daniel chapter uh, 7, verse 9. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. If anybody ha I mean, uh, uh, can take that verses, you can read it, okay? If you, if you are taking first, you can read it. Otherwise, I will try to read it. Okay, Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was like, the, like white as wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. And one more verse is there. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. I'll read it for you. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. Okay, so this is the same thing which is written in Daniel chapter 7 verse 9 and also in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Okay, so that the same vision that Apostle John also was receiving while he was in in, 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 in island of Patmos, that means while he was in, in the spirit. Amen. So the meaning of that speciality of the head and hair of Jesus Christ shows that he is pre-existent and the eternal existency of Jesus Christ and the divine purity. Okay, that white, uh, uh, white as snow means the purity and the holiness of Jesus Christ and the ancientcy of Jesus. Amen. So that is the meaning of that vision, the first, uh, I mean, description of the, I mean, I mean, Jesus Christ and the vision. And the second one is in, uh, in uh, uh, verse 14 itself, uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 itself. Again, it says that um, uh, his head and hair were, I mean, were white like white wool, like snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. So the second description is about his eyes. The second description is about his eyes. That is in verse 14. So what is the speciality of his eyes? What is the speciality of the eyes of Jesus? It is written there that way that was like a flame of fire. That was like a flame of fire. Flame of fire. Which means Jesus is omniscient and all-knowing God. Jesus is omniscient 
and all knowing god that is the meaning of the of uh, the, the eyes of jesus is like a flame of fire eyes of jesus is a, like a flame of fire jesus is omniscient and all knowing god okay now we will go to the uh, book of daniel book of daniel chapter 10 verse 5 his body Sorry. Uh, if, if you can read, uh, I mean, uh, uh, we will be, I mean, moving fast. Okay. Chapter 10, verse 6. Uh, nine, 5, six. 6, and 9. Five, six, I lifted nine. my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of Upa. His body was like verily, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color and the sound of his word like the voice of a multitude. Verse number nine. Right. Yet I heard the sound of his words, and while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face with my face to the ground. Praise God. Okay, so these verses, when you read I mean, verses five, six, and nine, we are taking only about the eyes. You know, Daniel also was seeing that same vision about Jesus Christ, I mean, years and years ago, okay? So Daniel was receiving the same vision and that also was about Jesus. But Daniel, Daniel was not knowing that it was about Jesus, okay? Because it is a prophetical word. It is a prophetical vision. So he says his eyes were like a flaming torches, a flaming torches, okay? So Daniel is getting the vision just like that Jesus' eyes were just like a flaming torches, flaming torches torches uh, the, the the meaning of that word is the meaning of that word is you know hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 when you read uh, hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 it says that all things are open to the eyes of god is it right all things are open to the eyes of god amen that means you know we cannot hide anything from the presence of god okay so the eyes of jesus the eyes of jesus is always open and all things are open to the eyes of God. We cannot hide anything from the presence of God. Everything is open. Everything is open. That means God is omniscient and his eyes can see anything, anything. He is all-knowing God. He knows everything and he can see everything. And eyes like a flaming, uh, okay, 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 flame of fire indicates at present he can see everything. But on the day of judgment, we will see the eyes of wrath on those who are not believed Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Amen. So two, two things are there, uh, uh, even in the same description, that his eyes, you know, the first thing is at present, he can see everything. Okay. But on the, on the day of judgment, two days are there. At present, he can see everything. What is happening? In this universe amen so what is happening in our midst so he can see everything at the same time there is another day that is the day of judgment that is the day of judgment and we will see that eyes of wrath on the on the day of judgment amen uh, we will see the eyes of the wrath on those who are not believed jesus as a savior and the lord there are there are two kinds of people there are there are a, a group of people, those who uh, believed and accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. At the same time, the other group is unbelievers. That means they don't believe in God, even they don't believe in, in Jesus Christ, and they don't, don't believe that Jesus is the Lord and savior. So, uh, so there is a day which is coming. It is known as the day of judgment. In that day, his eyes will be just like uh, the, the, the flaming fire. His I mean, eyes will be just like a flaming torches or flaming, I mean, fire. That is the speciality of the eyes of Jesus Christ when Apostle John was watching that vision at, I mean, Island of Patmos. Now, we will go to the third speciality, third description of the vision that is in verse 15, verse 15. That is his feet, his feet. So in verse 15, chapter 1, verse 15, his feet were like burnished bronze. 
his feet were like burnished brass or bronze okay both are same okay burnished bronze or burnished brass and also as if refined in a furnace as if refined in a furnace or another other translation it has been made to glow in a furnace or refined in a furnace okay to understand what is the meaning that his feet were like a burnished brass burnished brass we will go to daniel chapter 10 verse 6 daniel chapter 10 verse 6 says like this his body also was like well and his face had the appearance of lightning his eyes were like flaming torches his arms and feet like the gleam of polished bronze okay that, that's it you know so his feet was like the gleam of polished bronze and feet under the furnace shows that the feet of jesus which he has gone through the the struggles and the hardship and the pain you know now we are coming to the the point you know the point number three is his feet his feet okay that is in revelation chapter 1 verse 15 so it i mean it is written in revelation that his feet is like a burnished brass burnished brass and uh, it is refined in a furnace it is refined in a furnace i mean so uh, what what is the meaning of that you know his feet uh, or, the, or G, the, the feet of Jesus, I mean, has gone through many struggles. Okay, when you, you see a brass which is going gone through the refined uh, furnace, I mean, uh, the, the glazing is different, the glazing is different, the glory is different. So that's the same thing which is happening with the feet of Jesus Christ. When John was, I mean, uh, getting the vision about Jesus Christ, he is saying that, okay, I am seeing the feet of Jesus just like a burnished brass and i feel that it is refined in a furnace it is refined in a furnace that means i mean when i mean uh, uh, he jesus has gone through many struggles in his life many hardship and many pains okay the way to the cross of calvary was painful it is real i mean the, the way to the way to the i mean calvary you know the cross of calvary was very painful we cannot bear it you know so jesus was going through many hardship and painful situation and many i mean struggles in his life so his feet became in that way in that way you know when we when we go to the the, the bible verses especially from uh, uh, Secretary chapter 14 verse 4 and everything we understand there are different aspects of the feet of jesus different aspects of jesus or the feet of jesus you know for example you know uh, when jesus was walking through this uh, uh, yes uh, uh, it was to save the people. It was to save the people. Okay, so uh, his feet for salvation. That was the feet of salvation. Four four types are there mainly. Okay, the first one was the feet of salvation was there. Okay, the, you know the the, the the different aspects of feet of Jesus. You know, uh, uh, Jesus was uh, uh, using his feet, and we can see in a, in a in a in a different way, different aspects uh, about the feet of Jesus. You know, when he was doing his public ministry in this world, you know, the, the feet of Jesus was it, was, it was walking for the salvation. It was walking for the salvation. That means, I mean, he was, I mean, moving around, moving in this world, and he was preaching the gospel and preaching about the, 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 the uh, I mean, a gospel and everything, about the kingdom of God and everything. So uh, that was the, that was, we, we, uh, that is what we see that uh, the feet of Jesus was for salvation while he was in his public ministry. But uh, we understand that uh, uh, that the same feet, uh, it, it, it went through the painful situation. What was that? The painful feet. What is that? They nailed the feet of Jesus. They nailed, the people nailed the, the feet of Jesus. So that is the second thing. You know, it, it became a painful feet. The first feet, we understand, it was the feet of salvation. Okay, and secondly, we understand it was a painful feat. It was a painful feat because they nailed the feet of Jesus Christ. Okay, so the feet of Jesus walks among the church. That is what we read in Revelation chapter 1. 
the feet of Jesus walks among the church. Okay, he is always walking among the among the among the church means uh, in in the midst of the believers. In the midst of the believers, that means the feet of watch over, the feet of watching over. You know, when we say that Jesus is walking, walking inside the church. When we say that Jesus is walking inside the church and always, I mean, I mean, uh, Jesus is watching the people. Jesus is watching the people. That means we understand that we. We pray, whenever we pray, we used to pray, and we have the promise also that wherever you gather, uh, I mean, two or three gather in my name, I mean, I will be in the midst of them. That means he is coming in the midst of the people of God to watch over and to bless the people, to watch over and to bless the people. So that feet of Jesus is walking among the church. That means he is the, is the feet of the watch over. Okay, then, and the other thing we can see in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 2. Okay, Sakriya chapter 14, verse 2, we read uh, on, on, the, on, the, on, on the other day, and his feet will be standing on the Mount of Olives. Okay, we will read that verse, Sakriya chapter uh, 14, verse 4. It is in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in the front of Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives will be split in its middle from east to west by the very large valley, so that half of the mountain will be moved toward the north and the other half towards the south. I mean, that means that is the day. That is the day that, I mean, Jesus is going to put his feet, I mean, on the Mount of Olives, on the Mount of Olives to rule over the earth, to rule over the earth. So, so that is the Day that we will see the feet of Jesus Christ, I mean, walking to rule over the earth, to rule over the earth. I mean, we also will be with Jesus when he is going to rule over the earth on that day. I mean, so let us praise God for that. And now we will go to the uh, fourth point. We will go to the fourth description that is his voice. His voice. The fourth description is. His voice that is in verse 15. Verse 15 itself. Maybe verse 15, the second part. His voice was like the sound of many waters. His voice was like the sound of many waters. You know why it is written that his voice was just like a many sound of okay, sound of many waters. Okay, in Malayalam it is written. Peru Velatinde Shabdam Bole. Peru Velatinde Shabdam Bole. It is in English, it is many waters, sound of many waters, which speaks about the authority and power of Jesus Christ. The authority and power of Jesus Christ. You know, the first voice John heard was in chapter 1, verse 10. Okay, the first voice of Jesus Christ he heard, John heard from the Patmos, from the island of Patmos, which is written in chapter 1, verse 10. What is that? I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice, like the sound of the trumpet. Okay, that first sound was just like a sound of trumpet. Okay, you know, a trumpet saying something. Okay, the first sound. You know, when he was listening the first sound in chapter 1, verse 10, it says that, it was like a sound of trumpet, the heavy, heavy sound, you know, saying something, write in a book what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and all the seven churches. Okay, so that is what. But the second time, this is the second time that he is getting the voice of God, he is getting the voice of God. This second time is in verse 15. It is like a sound of many waters. It's just like a sound of many waters. Okay. You know, when you go to John chapter 9, verses 10 and 11, John chapter 9, verses 10 and 11, we will be, I mean, seeing something about the voice of uh, Jesus Christ there. Okay. Uh, 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 John chapter 9, verses, I mean, uh, 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 sorry. John chapter 19, okay, 19 verses, 
10 and 11. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do not refuse to speak to me, Pilot said. Don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. Amen. So, okay. What is that? You know, uh, this book of uh, the Gospel of John also is written by Apostle John. The Gospel of John also is written by Apostle John. In his, in his Gospel, he is writing about Jesus that Jesus, while he was in public ministry, he was standing before the judge pilot. Okay? He was standing, standing before the uh, uh, judge pilot and he was keeping quiet and just like a meek person he was just keeping quiet he was not speaking anything okay they were asking questions but he was not speaking something okay so he was i mean keeping quiet he was keeping quiet and he is, he is we can see him uh, as, a, as a meek person okay he answered something at the same time he is just standing like a like a like a lamb okay without saying anything that, and he was thinking that let them say anything and I know that I am the son of God. Okay, and he was just standing that he was keeping quiet. But St. John in, in book of Revelation, in his vision, he is seeing Jesus in a different way, different way, his voice. Okay, the voice of Jesus in book of Revelation was just like a sound of many waters, just like a sound of many waters. That means the sound of Jesus can do the miracles. The voice of Jesus can do the miracles. The voice of Jesus can move the things. The voice of Jesus can do many things. Many, it can make many changes and differences. Okay, so that's the meaning of the voice of Jesus is found here, just like a sound of many what is just like a sound of many what is. Okay, and uh, one, one more thing you have to think about that, you know, John had many, many voices and many sounds around him, around him while he was in Patmos. Even though he was in the spirit, even though he was in the spirit, he was receiving the visions of God. At the same time, he is in the, in the island of Patmos. He didn't go anywhere. In the spirit only, he went to the, the spirit realm. Okay, so he is receiving the visions. At the same time, he is in the island of Patmos. There are many sounds. There are many voices around him. But at the same time, now when we are in the spirit, we will be able to listen the voice of God. When we are in the spirit, we'll be able to able to listen the the voice of God. I mean, so now we will go to I mean uh, the, the 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 fifth point. You know, uh, I'm not going to I mean uh, elaborately say all the points because. Uh, uh, I will be uh, uh, preaching one message or one, one sermon on any of the Sunday uh, about all these things. Okay, so I will be going fast about these points because I'll be preaching about all these things uh, elaborately on one Sunday. Okay, now we will go to the uh, point number five. Point number five is his hand. His hand. That is in chapter one, verse 16. Chapter 1, verse 16. It says like this. In his right hand, he held the seven stars. In his right hand, he held the seven stars. Seven stars in the right hand. So now, the right hand, what is the meaning of the right hand mentioned here? The right hand of Jesus. The right hand shows about the strength, protection, and authority and safety by Jesus Christ. The strength, protection, authority, and safety that which we have through Jesus Christ. So the fifth description is about his hand, the hand of Jesus Christ, the hand of Jesus Christ. So in that, 
John is receiving that vision that his Jesus, the hand of Jesus is like, a, 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 there, is, there are seven stars in the, in the right hand of Jesus Christ, which shows the strength, okay, holding or holding the seven stars, okay. Holding means, I mean, he has the strength, his hand has the strength and the, it, it, it gives the protection and it has the authority and there is a safety in the hands of God. There is a safety in the hands of God. That means, you know, when you go to chapter 1, verse 20, chapter 1, verse 20, it says like this, As for the mystery of the seven stars, which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Okay, what do you mean by that? The stars are the seven ministers of the churches. Seven ministers of the churches. Okay? Or it is written, uh, the angels. That means the angel means the messengers of God. The angels are the messengers of God. So that's the reason when it is written there, the, the, the seven stars. Okay? The seven stars means the seven ministers of the churches in Asia Minor. You know, there were uh, uh, this this book. I mean, uh, at that time, this book is written for the seven churches of Asia Minor. So that's the reason we can say that uh, the, all those churches were having the ministers, or you can call it as a pastor today. So they were having the shepherds, and they were having the ministers. So these are the seven ministers of those churches. They are known as the angels. Okay, known as the angels or the ministers. Okay, or it is written there. So, what is happening here? Okay, so here in this verse, verse 16, it says that when Jesus is holding the stars in his right hand, that means the ministers are safe in the hands of God, even if they go through the persecution and hardship. You know, seven stars are in his right hand. That means his right hand is strong, which shows the strength and the protection and the authority and the safety. So that's the reason we can say that Jesus is holding the seven stars in his right hand. That means he is, I mean, I mean, he is giving the safety. He is giving the protection for the ministers. I mean, even though they are going through the many difficult situation or persecution and hardship. Hallelujah. So that is the only thing that uh, the ministers of God are, I mean, eagerly I mean, I mean, I mean, praying and they are waiting for the presence of God and they are always doing the ministry of the Lord with that expectation that God's presence is there and God will protect the people of God, God will protect the ministers of God and always, I mean, God is giving more importance for the ministers because they are the messengers. They are the messengers. That means, you know, they are receiving the messenger or the messages from God. Okay. The ministers of the churches, they are receiving the messages from God and just handovering to the people of God. So that's the reason God is giving more importance for the ministers because God is caring for them and God will protect them. At the same time, God is able to protect all the believers also. I mean, God is able to protect the children of God. I mean, we will go to Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Daniel chapter 12. Verse 3. 12 verse 3 says, Those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven, and those who lead the many, lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Amen. So you know. Uh, according to this verse, you can say the ministers in the sense, it is not only the pastors, at the same time, the people, those who are doing something for the name of the Lord, or the people, those who are encased in any, any kind of ministry, whatever it may be, whatever it may be, any kind of ministry, any kind of service, service for the glory of God, not for ourselves, but for the glory of God. Those People are known as here, those who lead many to the righteousness. 
means the people those who are sharing the gospel to other people the people those who are bringing other people to christ and the people those who are showing the light for other people for the unbelievers those people are very important in the sight of god those people are very important in the sight of god and they will be just like a stars forever and ever that is what we read in here in daniel chapter 12 verse 3 those who lead many to the righteous righteousness you know what is the ministry of the ministry of a pastor what is the ministry of a of a prophet what is the ministry of an evangelist they are just bringing many people to the righteousness okay you know whenever the correction is not needed you know whenever the people are just i mean uh, going away from the presence of god the duty of the pastor the duty of the minister is bring them back to bring them back to the i mean presence of god and give them the right way i mean show them the right way and correct them and i mean give them the word of god that is the ministry of the the ministers or the pastors or the or the people those who are doing any kind of services in their life for the name of the lord so that is what we understand from this point point number five that his hand and he in his right hand there are seven stars seven stars okay now we will go to the sixth point the sixth point is talking about his mouth his mouth that is in verse 16 itself his mouth it says in his right hand he held seven stars and out of his mouth came a sharp two edged sword what is that out of his mouth came a sharp two edged sword okay the meaning of that is is a, is a great thing you know it says that okay from his mouth something is coming from his mouth something is coming what is the speciality of his mouth his mouth is just again okay, that means from his mouth i mean there is something coming a sharp two edged sword okay the sharp two edged sword which represents the power of the word of god which represents the power of the word of god okay when you think about the bible or the word of god um or, or you know uh, you know um, all of a sudden we would think that uh, think that okay this is a this is a book and this is these are the i mean papers and everything but at the same time understand one thing that this is i mean the word of god is written in the bible the word of god is written in the bible the bible is not not just like a paper but the word of god is written in the bible so that's the reason it has the power the word of god has the power what is that is what we read in hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 it is it is a by hearted verse for everyone right i mean hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 and we have been listening from that verse on uh, our i mean uh, uh, bible study on a uh, book of book of hebrews and uh, especially i was preaching all, also about uh, the, the the power or the importance of the word of god it says like this for the word of god is living and active and sharper than any two edged sword and piercing as far as the divisions of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart okay so that is the speciality of the word of god word of god means okay so the same thing ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 also ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 it says like this that and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god the sword of the spirit okay so this is the speciality of this word or this word is it is sharp and two-edged sharp and two-edged that means both side has sharpness and whenever a person is preaching whenever a, a, a person is preaching that that is applicable the word of god is applicable for both for the preacher and also for the audience okay the word of god is applicable for the preacher and also for the believers those who are listening or the audience okay so that is meaning of that his mouth there is a, there is something coming out of his mouth that is sharp to edge sword and second thessalonians 
chapter 2, verse 8 also we read. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. Then that lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. That means the Lord will slay the wicked with the breath of his mouth. That much power is there. That much authority is there in the, in the mouth of Jesus. In the mouth of Jesus. One day, the Lord will slay the wicked people with the breath of his mouth. Okay? Only with the breath of his mouth, I mean, he can slay the wicked people. Okay? That is the meaning of that, I mean, uh, 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 that mentioning about his mouth. Now, we will go to the seventh point. We'll go to the seventh point. That is about his face. His face. <clears throat> that is in verse 16 itself. His face is in verse 16 itself. It says, and his face was like the sun shining in its strength. His face was like the sun shining in its strength. You know, according to Matthew chapter 17, verse 2, okay? So when, when you read uh, Matthew chapter 17, verse 2, uh, there we can see a transfiguration mount, a transfiguration mount, and also, uh, in that verse, you know, uh, uh, Peter, James, and John, when they were having a, a special experience, a special experience, okay? So, at the same time, now, this is the memory of that Transfiguration Mount. This is the memory of the Transfiguration Mount, you know? On that occasion, Jesus was transferred before, transfigured before Peter, James, and John, and it says, and his face shone like the sun okay in matthew chapter 17 verse 2 it says that his face shone like a like a sun so that much brightness was there for the for the face of jesus when jesus was transfigured you know the, on the on the transfiguration mound in matthew chapter 17 verse 2 james was there peter was there john it is john also was there you know in that day john was Seeing Jesus just like his face is just like shown, like a sun, like a sun, it's, it's just like a bright. Okay, so it was, it was, I mean, uh, giving the light for the people when they were watching the face of Jesus Christ. So, to the children of God, the, the, the children of God, his face is a blessing. Okay, whenever we see the face of Jesus, it's a blessing, it's a blessing for the children of God. and it gives the light and radiance to the people of God. It gives a, I mean, a radiance and the light for the people of God. That is what we read in uh, uh, Revelation chapter 22, verses 3 and 4. 3 and 4. There will no longer be any curse, and the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his born servants will be serving him. They will see his face. What is that? They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Okay, they will see his face. So the, for the people of God, for the children of God, for the believers, amen, for the born again Christians, amen, so the face of Jesus is a blessing. The face of Jesus is a blessing and it gives the light and the radiance for the people of God, amen. But at the same time, same time, the, for, the, for, the sin, for the sinners, I mean, and wicked people. That's that we have. Uh, I mean, many references in Bible, especially in 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 Book of Revelation itself. Okay, in the Book of Revelation, chapter six, verses uh, sixteen and seventeen. Also, we will be. I mean, going through that. You know, for the sin, for the sinners and the wicked people, the face of Jesus is going to be the consuming fire, and they will not be able to stand before Him on that day. On that day, Hallelujah. So. Uh, Revelation chapter 6 verses 16 and 17 says and they said to the mountains and to the rocks fall on us and hide us from the 
presence of him who sits on the throne. That means once Jesus is going to sit on the throne to judge the people, to punish the people. Okay, and that day and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to stand before Jesus? Who is able to stand before Jesus? No, no, at present there are possibilities. No, at present we are able to see the face of Jesus with our inner eyes. You know, whenever we gather together, whenever we worship together, whenever we pray, I mean. Uh, the reason that, I mean, the pastors are saying, close your eyes and pray. Why? Close your eyes and pray. That means when our, in, uh, when our, our outer eyes are, I mean, open, that is a disturbance, you know. We'll be looking here and there and we will, we will not be able to pray concentratedly. But when our, I mean, outer eyes are closed and when our inner eyes are open, then we will be able to see the face of jesus christ when we worship the lord amen so we have to see the face of jesus in our spirit in our spirit okay so th that is the reason that we have to worship the lord with that gladness and with that happiness and uh, we are jumping and clapping your hands and we are praising god and lifting your hands because the reason is we are seeing in the spirit the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. It which gives the light and the radiance for the people of God at the same time. For the sinner, for the sinners and the wicked people, the people those who are not believing in Jesus, the people those who are not able to, I mean, I mean, stand for Christ in their, I mean, in, in their I mean, life, you know, for them, it's it's a consuming fire. The face of Jesus will be the consuming fire, and they will not be able to stand before Jesus Christ on that day. I mean, so these are the seven description about Jesus Christ in the vision of John, in the vision of John. If anybody is having any question or doubt from that portion, you can uh, ask now. Otherwise, uh, we will go to the next, uh, I mean, uh, next portion. Pastor, one question. Yeah. Uh, the feet of bronze that you said over here in uh, Revelation chapter 15th verse, the one was 15, you said that it represents the struggle of Jesus or the, um, the pain and struggle that he went through while he was on the earth. But when Daniel saw the vision of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, he saw this feet with the bronze feet. But that time the struggle was not there. I mean, Jesus did not go through that struggle. Okay, so so why is that bronze feet? And when in Daniel, when God, when da Daniel saw that vision, why is it present the bronze feet when Jesus yeah. did not struggle yeah. yet? Okay, so that was that was the reason that I was just I mean describing something about the aspects of the feet of Jesus, aspects of the feet of Jesus. You know, when Daniel was uh, I mean watching that vision. Uh, he was not having any idea about Jesus Christ. At the same time, he was seeing that in a, in a different way. At the same time, you know, uh, when we, I mean, uh, study about the life history of Jesus Christ, life history of Jesus Christ, that's the reason I said, you know, we can divide it into maybe three or four divisions, just like that, you know, Daniel also was seeing in that way, and John is seeing in this way here in, in, in New Testament. At the same time, Jesus was walking in this, I mean, Jesus was living and in his public ministry, he was here. So at that time, that time, his feet was going for the salvation to, to save the people. Okay. At the same time, the people, the, his own people, the Jewish people, they themselves nailed the feet of Jesus. That, that's the reason I said, you know, the difference between the different aspect, aspects of the feet of Jesus. Okay. So Daniel was watching that one, but Daniel was not knowing that this is the feet of Jesus, but he was knowing something is going to happen in the future. Okay, so that much difference is there. At the same time, John also is seeing the feet of Jesus in a different way that he, he also is explaining that that feet is having that power and the feet is having that authority. That with that feet he will be coming and he will putting he will be putting his feet on the uh, on the mountain of olive. So that is the that is the difference between. The, the vision of Daniel and the vision of John. 
Okay. So, uh, Pastor, this is uh, Andrew here. Uh, in one of the earlier classes, you did mention that uh, when John was actually writing this to the seven churches, he was using a code language because yeah. uh, all these churches were in the fear of persecution. Yeah. So in this section, uh, when he is describing, he's he's actually describing the physical appearance of Jesus, right? Like. Yeah. Uh, so, is it uh, supposed to be assumed that when he writes this? Uh, to the seven churches, the churches are able to interpret it as something beyond just a physical appearance. Um, that uh, actually, uh, uh, Apostle John is receiving this vision, and he is writing to the churches. At the same time, at the same time, you know the the speciality of the revelations. You know, there are different kinds of interpretations. You know. One person can interpret uh, uh, one portion in one way, and the other person can, uh, I mean, bring his own views. Okay, there are many views about these things. But at the same time, those people in those days they were understanding the clear meaning and the clear picture of the Jesus Christ, the vision of Jesus Christ, because they were knowing that they were. I told you know they were going through the persecution. So whenever they see that vision, okay, John was receiving this vision, and John is writing in this way. And something is interpreted in in the book itself. Okay, something is written or in, interpreted in the book itself. At the same time, something is in in the Old Testament. So these people or the church believers were, I mean, mostly understanding in the same way that this is the meaning of the vision of John in Patmos, and this this will be the interpretation or this will be the meaning. So uh, we we cannot say that what they were thinking about those things. Okay, we cannot say that what they were thinking about. What they understood, what they understood, but from the from the uh, uh, the historical books and the prophetical books, we will be making a conclusion that this is what they were thinking that Jesus, I mean, in the vision, and this is the meaning or interpretation of that. Is that okay, Anja? Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Now we will go to the next uh, uh, heading, that is. Uh, 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 seven personalities of Jesus Christ. Seven personalities of Jesus Christ. It's already 840. Now we'll see what how much we can do. Okay. Seven personalities of Jesus Christ from chapter 1, verses 17 through 19. Chapter 1, verses 17 through 19. <clears throat> So before uh, before we go to the seven personalities of Jesus Christ, you know, uh, let me uh, tell you one thing from verse seventy, verse seventeen. You know, when you read uh, verse seventeen, it says that when I saw him in vision, when I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man, and he placed his right hand on me, saying. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Okay? So here John says, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. That means as a dead man. Okay. You know, when you read Bible, there are many uh, people in the Bible, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. I mean, they fell at the, at the presence of God or they fell at the feet of Jesus Christ. Okay, so when they received the vision of God, I'll, I'll give you the, the slide of uh, that, uh, I mean, uh, points, you know, uh, of those who uh, received the, uh, sorry, those who, I mean, fell down at the feet of, feet of God. Okay, so you can write it down very, very quickly, that points. Maybe uh, I'll read it and you can, you can, you can write it. It's there in the slide. So uh, the first one is Abraham, uh, Genesis 17.3, Mano, Judges. 13 verse 20. Mano is in Malayalam, Manoha. Okay. And Joshua, Joshua 5, 14 and 15. Then Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. 
a circle the second chapter 1 verse 28 next daniel daniel chapter 8 verse 17 peter james and john matthew chapter 17 verse 6 or you can take a picture of that <laughs> John, Matthew chapter 76, Saul, Acts 9, 4, John, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Then, Okay, so time is up. So now, so when John saw Jesus, he fell down. Okay, it is written in verse 17. Okay, when John saw Jesus, he fell down. Okay, it is in verse uh, 17. And he says that Jesus placed his right hand on him and said, Do not be afraid. Okay, do not be afraid. So this is this is a tremendous I mean thing that we have to understand one thing that when Apostle John was receiving the visions from God. He just fell down at the feet of Jesus, at the feet of Jesus. Okay, then, you know, there are many people, okay, as I told you, there are many people who fell down at the feet of Jesus or the presence of Jesus, which shows that, you know, whenever, see, whenever we receive the vision of God, whenever we, I mean, understand the meaning and the power of God and the, and the authority of God, I mean, automatically we will fall down. Okay, we will fall down. We will bow down in the presence of God. Hallelujah. So that's that much authority God has, and we are nothing in front of God. I mean, we cannot do anything, but God has the power. God has the authority. You know, when we, when we, when we, I mean, we, I mean, uh, 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 fall down in the presence of God. That means we are humbling ourselves. Okay, we are humbling. Ourself. That means, I mean, I don't know anything and I need to get many things from God or God. Hallelujah. And that is the meaning of that. He just fell down at the feet of Jesus and he was ready, getting ready to receive the visions of God. Amen. He was ready, getting ready to receive the visions of God. Hallelujah. And then that is the meaning of that. And Jesus placed, then when he fell down in the presence of God, at the feet of Jesus, what, what Jesus did? Jesus placed his right hand on him. And said, do not be afraid. Here again, it says, right hand of Jesus. Right hand of Jesus. Again, I told you, you know, the meaning is, right hand of Jesus has the protection. The right hand of Jesus is having the safety. The right hand of Jesus is having the authority and the strength to hold the people and to console the people and to comfort the people. Amen. John was, John might be, Becoming very afraid and uh, I mean seeing all these things and hearing the voice and everything he might be very 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 I mean a scared but Jesus said I'm placing my right hand upon you and do not be afraid and God is going to bless you and God is going to strengthen you I mean then then after that we see the seven I mean personalities of Jesus Christ in verses 17 and 18 in that two verses we can see seven uh, specialities and seven things from that verses and now we'll be closing now it is time is up and uh, uh, we'll be continuing the same portion uh, that uh, i mean the last portion in the next class and read that portion and understand it very clearly and you can read uh, chapter one all chapter then uh, i mean i mean if you have any doubt if, when you're reading if you're getting any doubt from that you can bring it Okay, so we will clarify that question. And also, um, okay, so the next day, next class, who is going to share the portions? Who can? Who can? Other than these people, Anjo, Cedric, and Emmy, and Emmy George, and Divya. Anyone? Decide now itself. Joshua, you're going to do that. Very good. Very good. Very good. 
Okay, so Joshua is going to do that. So for the for the next class. So God bless you all. And shall we pray and close our Bible study this evening? And uh, I request uh, uh, dear uh, Cedric to lead us in prayer now, and we will close the uh, meeting. And also let's pray for everyone those who are attending for this Bible study, especially. Uh, thank you, Anjo and uh, Anub and all those people. Uh, those who are attending in this prayer meeting, uh, uh, Bible study, and also let's bring all the people in the mighty hand of God. You know, there are many people going through the struggles in different states, even in California also. Let's pray for all those people and let's bring everything in the mighty hand of God. And we have a, a main guest pastor uh, on Sunday. Uh, his name is uh, Pastor P.U. Benny. He is from Mumbai. So uh, he will be, I mean, uh, delivering the message on Sunday. So let us pray for the blessing of the Sunday service also. I request uh, uh, dear Cedric to lead us in prayer.